the music that we were singing today because they fit right into the message and the prayer that Chris was, was praying also fits right into the message. Um, thank you, Father. I have a lot to share, so I pray that the Lord will help me to deliver it in a way that will make sense. There's a lot of darkness taking place in the world, and I think almost everyone from the youngest to the oldest of those who have any knowledge at all of the scripture. I want to start today in Romans chapter 8. Jesus Christ died on the cross, and we're going to revisit some of the things we talked about last week. We talked about control opposition and about being aware and today we're going to talk about being awake your body is still waiting for redemption your soul your spirit is sealed with the Holy Spirit and the more time we spend in the Word of God the more we will be like Christ the more we'll be able to recognize his voice because the Lord is in the scriptures. And so without spending time in the scriptures or meditating on the scriptures, we would not be able to withstand the things that we see taking place in the earth. The Lord says that men's heart fail for the things that they see taking place in the earth. In Romans 8, verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole creation groans and travails and pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, capital S, Spirit, Holy Spirit. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the, adopt, for the adoption to wit. That word to wit means that is to say. So that is to say the redemption of our body. We are waiting for the redemption of our bodies. Our bodies still exist in this realm. The enemy is still able to afflict us in this realm. We have to make a choice whether we're going to obey the Lord or whether we're going to go after the things of this world. Turn to James. I pray that all of this will make sense. We are the first fruit like Jesus. James chapter 1. There's a problem with the internet. I'm sure you all have noticed with your phones or your, or your devices, they don't work the same. That's a precursor to the things that's getting ready to seemingly to take place in the earth. James chapter 1. Look at verse 17. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of God's own will, of his own will, begot he us with the word of truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the word. So of his own will, he begot us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creature. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. Every man, take your time, listen before you speak. We are the first fruit of Jesus Christ. We represent him in this earth. We might be groaning. We might be, we might be having pain or suffering or, or, or afflictions. But we still got to stand strong in our faith and our confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to Romans chapter 12. Some of these scriptures... 
we've been over them many, many times. But when you look at the things that's taking place in the world today, I think it's a huge blessing to go back and revisit them and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you because now you should be able to understand them from a deeper perspective and you should be able to see the value of each scripture. Chapter 12, verse 1 says, Paul is saying, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The only way you're going to know the perfect will of God is that you have to not be conformed by transforming. Let me give you the definition of conformed. Conform means to comply with rules, standards, or laws, to be comply to comply with rules, standards, or laws, identify with having outward shape properly assimilate a similar outward form by following the same pattern, model, or mold. It's the Greek word number 49, 64, and 62. 40, you can look it up, 49, 64, and 49, 62 in the Strong's Concordance. And I'll read it one more time. It's identified with having outward shape, properly I'm sorry, properly assuming a similar outward form by following the same pattern, model, or mold. So when you allow yourself to be conformed to this world, you follow the rules and the standards and the laws of this world. You identify with the outward shape, assuming the, a similar outward form, pattern, model, mold. I'm trying to break it down because we read the scriptures, but we don't look up different words. We just assume what they mean. But when you look them up like this, you get a much deeper understanding and meaning. So reading it, verse 2 again, it says, Be not conformed to this world. Go ahead and listen. But be renewed. Or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind, your your spirit is saved. Your body is still waiting for redemption. But your mind got to be transformed. Because if your mind don't get transferred, transformed by, by the word of God, you will continue to be conformed after the pattern of this world. Am I making sense to you so far? And that's where people don't understand or not being taught. So now when you go to the average church today, the average church is conformed to this world. It's following after the pattern, the rules, the standards of this world. That's why people can do yoga and, and um, prayer circle and all of the things that people are doing that is paganistic because they're following after the pattern of this world. Am I making sense so far? Okay, go to Rome. I'm sorry, Ephesians. I have a lot of scriptures to share. And don't worry, Miss Mary, this is, um, it's being recorded, so you will get the full thing. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm trying to go slow, because I really pray that you will get this today, because I think it will bless your soul. We're not supposed to be anxious. We are not supposed to be worried. The enemy is at hard at work trying to bring about confusion and chaos and deception and everything evil and dark and perverted. And if we look at what we see taking place and if we pay close attention to everything that we hear, we'll, we'll faint. We won't endure until the end. 
It'll make you want to go into a corner and hide. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, You have not he quickened. You has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So there's a spirit now at work in the world in the children of disobedience. They are disobeying because there's a strong dark spiritual force at work in the world. Among whom also we all had our conversation or our, our way of life in times past in the lusts of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and underline of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others isn't that something but God who is rich in mercy by the mercies of God we beseech you brother that you present yourself a holy sacrifice by the mercies of God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. He has quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. And he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You only can understand that by having your mind renewed and conform not to this world in order to be able to understand that you don't walk by what you see, by what your flesh dictates to you, because you are already, spiritually speaking, seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, because your spirit has been awakened and made alive to the things of this world. But I mean, to the things of Christ. But the enemy is hard at work trying to keep your mind earthbound earth-centered, centered on the things in this world instead of centered on the things above. Am I making sense to you so far? Turn now to chapter 5. I'm sorry, yeah. Chapter 5. Thank you, Jesus. E Ephesians chapter 5. And look at verse 26. It says that he, talking about Christ, might sanctify, that means set apart or set aside, and cleanse it, the church, with the washing of water by the word. So this is what Christ and God the Father expects of us, and this is what the word does. That's why there's a huge battle to keep us out of the word. Or to change the word. Or pervert the word. Because Jesus Christ is the word and the word is Christ. And when we get Jesus Christ and the word in us, it washes us. It transforms us. And it keeps us from following after the rule of, of, this, the, the rule of this world. Thank you, Jesus. Let me give you, I want to give you the definition of. How many of you ever heard of predictive programming? Predictive programming. Let me give you the, what the predictive, predictive programming. Thank you, Lord. The definition is a subtle form of psychological conditioning provided by the media. Isn't that something? To acquaint the public with planned societal changes to be implemented by our leaders. If and when 
these changes are put through, the public will already be familiarized with them and will accept them as natural and in quotation mark put natural progression. Thus lessening any possible public resistance and commotion. This is what's been happen happening to humanity, society for a long time. So that TV was introduced, using TV as an example, TV was an example of when we would watch it to get you used to watching it, to get you programmed to watching it. So at first it started out with wholesome programs when I was a kid, like Father Knows Best, the Donna Reed show, and, and other Leave it to Beaver kind of shows. And then it's gradually started introducing other things. I also would encourage people who have children or grandchildren to really research deeper this this predictive programming because it shows you how people set their children in front of cartoons and animation animated type programs and without realizing the subliminal um, indoctrination that is doing to the children or programming them to do just what this is saying so that children start being rebellious and acting out and you don't understand why the children are being that way and it's hard to pre protect your children from this because it's everywhere and they've caused you to be so programmed that you are addicted to it am I making sense to you that's that's how you get conformed to this world do you understand? I'm trying to really break this down. You follow after the rule, the pattern that it wants you to follow after because you've already been programmed. Christ quickens us and he makes us alive to the things of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. So that if we stay in the Word, if we do what the Word instructs us to do, we wouldn't be conformed to this world, but we'll be transformed. And he explains to us, we'll be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But if we continue to allow ourselves to be conformed to the things of this world, the two conflicts with each other. You can't be conformed to the things of this world and be transformed by the renewing of your mind at the same time. Am I making sense to you? Mm -hmm. You're either going to have one or the other. And in Christ, you have to change. Okay? Am I making sense? All right. Turn to Romans again, chapter 1. You already been here. I just want to go back just to show it to you in scripture again. Romans chapter 1 verse 22 says, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Let's look at verse 21 again. It says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain. Remember, vain means void and empty. in their imaginations. And their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That's what you see taking place in the world today. I'm trying to contrast between being part of the world and being part of God's kingdom. The Lord decided that you would be alive at this particular time in history to represent him. All right? Turn back to Ephesians. This time, let's look at chapter 4. Most of our scriptures today are in Ephesians. Thank you, Father. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1 says, I therefore, Paul speaking, the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation which is your calling, wherewith you are called. Whatever God has called you to do, you walk worthy of that. With all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love. That's huge. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Holy Spirit in the bond of peace 
There's one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Walk in unity and love. Am I making sense? Look down to verse 6. I'm sorry, I want to go to chapter 5. And look at verse 1. 